Thank you so much for joining us on today's bulletin. Welcome to Agri News. I'm Esther Kishuki. On today's top story, low food production in most parts of the country has been largely contributed to by use of wrong seeds. But an online tool that tells farmers the right seed to grow is set to change this trend. Over the last few years, maize farmers have struggled to produce enough food for the country, weighed down by the changing climatic patterns and the continued use of outdated farming methods. But experts now say the biggest impediment to high productivity is the continued use of wrong seeds. Every year, many farmers plant the wrong maize seeds variety, ending up with poor yields. Persistent advertising and promotion of certain maize seeds varieties by certain companies is partly to blame for the problem. Another problem is that farmers usually ask local agrovet shops to sell them the best maize varieties. This approach is not yet effective because seed stockies are not experts and will often recommend stocks that is not moving to get it rid of the shelves. The situation in Kenya is, is a bit worrying. We, we keep saying that agriculture is the mainstay of Kenya's economy because it gives government up to 45% of its revenue. How could a farmer go about choosing the right seed to plant? Well, different seeds are developed on the basis of altitude rainfall type of soil and temperature and other climatic conditions to meet the needs of farmers in every climatic region. We came to this uh, conclusion then that how can we then get information available to farmers? How can the small scale farmer or even the agro dealer selling maize or any other seed variety to the farmer get to know what is critical and what favors the farmer's agroecological zone? But with the growing use of online technology in the country, Farmers can now find information about their region and the right seed for their farms in a matter of seconds. Thanks to a new online seed tool that maps varieties for all the 47 counties, the new seed bank, Dab Mbeguchois, was developed jointly by the Kenya Agricultural and Livestock Research Organization, CALRO, the Kenya Plant Health Inspectorate Services, KEFIS, Seed companies and agri-experience allow farmers and local seed sellers to access a list of suitable seed varieties suited to specific weather conditions and soils for their areas. When you log in, the first page tells you who is supposed to use it, what benefit it has for the farmer, the agro dealer, and the extension officer. Then when you click the Let Begin button, it will go to a page where it will ask the user maybe a farmer, an agro dealer, or an extension officer, three questions. F the first question it will ask, in which county do you come from? The Agri-Experience online tool also allows agri-dealers, extension workers, and farmers access to data on the varieties of popular crops given the location, growing condition, and farmers' preferences, and highlights aspects like disease resistance or cooking properties. The Cabinet Secretary for Agriculture, Peter Munya, has officially flagged off the Kenya Climate Smart Agriculture Project. The project aims to transform the livelihoods of small-scale farmers and pastoral communities in 26 counties. In partnership with the World Bank, farmers from semi-arid and non assol counties are set to benefit from the Kenya Climate Smart Agriculture Project by becoming more resilient to climate change through various trainings. Some of the counties that will benefit include Machakos, Marsabit, Taita Taveta, Nyeri, Kisumu, Bomet, and Elgeo Marakwet, among others. Passing on the 24 counties where the project is implemented, a total of, of 2,164 community micro-projects estimated to cost $1.5 billion have been approved and ready for implementation. A further 828 million shillings has been allocated to support long-term training through assisting the national agriculture research systems in matters innovations, management practices, and dissemination of technology. After the implementation of this project, we expect to transform the communities in the target project areas by having more women as beneficiaries increasing the productivity of selected crops, livestock, and aquaculture value chains, 
and boosting their resilience through promoting agricultural technologies, innovations, and management practices suitable for these areas. This is in line with the goals and aspirations of realizing 100% food and nutrition security under the Big Four agenda of the national government. The five-year development project will be implemented under the following five thematic components that is one, upscaling climate smart agricultural practices, two, strengthening climate smart agricultural research and seed systems, three, supporting agro weather, market, climate, and advisory services, four, project coordination and management, five, contingency, emergency responses. So those are the, the, the five thematic components that this project uh, is targeting. CS highlighted that the remaining 35 vehicles, mainly for the arid areas, will be released soon to support the project. That we continue to play our role as the national government in collaboration with development partners to enhance the capacity of the counties and our research institutions by releasing a total of 26 vehicles out of the 61 that we intend to release to the field under this project. I'm informed that the remaining 35 vehicles, mainly for the arid areas, will be released soon to support this project work. I wish from the outset to thank the World Bank, who are our partners in this project for the finances and the technical support the bank has extended in this project. The flagging of these four-wheel drive vehicles are seen to facilitate the duties of Kenya Climate Smart Agricultural Projects in the next five years within the 24 counties. Maron Munyao reporting for KTN Farmers TV. Farmers from Machakos, Kitui and Makueni counties have received training on yellow passion fruit farming. The training was meant to help the farmers learn how to grow and take care of the crop as an alternative source of income. Joyce Wavinya, a farmer from Kitui County, tells me that she has planted 350 yellow passion plants, which she harvests twice a week, with every pig giving her 150 kilos. It is a good farming. It is paying in that there is no single time that you will lack market for your passions. The other advantage with passion farming is there is no waste. If you harvest your fruits today and maybe for one or two reasons you don't make it to the market or you don't find market that day, they can survive for even two weeks and they don't go bad. The only disadvantage is that they are going to lose weight and most of the buyers buy in kilograms. But at least you will not lose everything. It is not labor intensive. If you are, especially if you are doing irrigation, you will just have very minimal people on your farm and I think the cost of production will be brought down by that fact. Wavinya noted that she gained knowledge from the training as she didn't know that one can do organic farming instead of using fertilizers like she used to do. Although I have been doing it not with a lot of uh, experience and I have not followed the right way for farming passion because I didn't know. I was just doing it in my own way. But at least I am able to harvest 150 to 200 kilograms per week. And when I say per week, I mean from January to December. In as much as you are watering your crops, you are pruning because actually it needs a lot of pruning, you will always be in the market. Dominic Muthiani, another farmer from Achako said that as they prepare to enter into contract with exporters, they need more training over pest and disease management because fruits for exports need more high standards. We need to, to be trained on one, uh, pest management and disease management on this crop. Because previously, those that were buying from us were not very serious with standards. They could buy any fruit, and uh, now that we are going to this one, we need that training. Daniel Ngao, a youth farmer with fruit plants in half an acre in Machakos County, said he was surprised to only find two young men at the training, thus calling on other young people to venture into farming 
where they can get income compared to other jobs. Tutokee wote tulime. Hii biashara ni biashara itatufanikisha na tumeweza kuzungumzia mambo ambayo yametuondolea wale brokers ambao wanakuja na kunyanyasa mkulima. Tumeweza kukubaliana kwa mambo ya contracted farming ambayo yanaweza kutusaidia kama kijana kujiinua. Steven Kisilu the MD of Kefsinta Green Growers and Exporters Limited say that they have ready market and supplies low. He pleaded with the county government where they have their projects to work hand in hand with them so as to fight poverty in the country. Mangabana wetu wale tumetaja zile county tumetaja tushirikiane na wao tuone sisi kama kambuni tutasaidia mkulima wa chini aje na county government itasaidia mkulima uh, mkulima wa chini haji na kwa hiyo njia utapata tumeweka pesa kwa mifuko ya wakulima tutapata tumeinua economy, economically mkulima atakuwa empowered na atakuwa na kitu cha kufurahia okisegere ojepat from the private sector say the training will help farmers get the right information of how they can increase their income uh, we're doing this to encourage growers to do yellow passion that is going to help us to get both of uh, the fruit and the pulp. And the idea here is to ensure that we increase the uh, farm income and ensure that farmers have alternative sources of, um, uh, of income while they are doing their farming. The reason why they chose Ukambani is because it is hot and the area has a good climatic condition for crops. Secondly, the area also has plenty of land which farmers can grow the crops. Philip Kaitang for KTN Farmers TV. Up next is a roundup of agricultural stories that have been making headlines in other parts of the world. Heading on to Western Kenya, where a group of farmers is processing hyacinth into manure in a bid to conserve Lake Victoria and boost crop yield in farms. Water hyacinth remains a tenacious weed in various African countries and has choked off large parts of the freshwater lake that straddles Kenya, Uganda and Tanzania. The weed has alarmed environmentalists with its spread over the years. The farmers use the hyacinth manure in the group's demonstration farm and in their individual farms as well. Hyacinth can also be used as mulch in farms to help retain moisture in the soil. The government has had little success in eradicating the weed, which now covers the lake surface like a carpet of grass, cutting off local communities from vital fishing grounds and choking regional ports. We use the dry stock, then made from maize or any plant material. Then we cover it with, we also put the layer of dry grass. Then we put the layer of a heap of the water hyacinth. Then we cover with the uh, topsoil, which will aid the decomposition. And then we cover, we sprinkle udas. And the udas ask as a base to neutralize the acidity and then we sprinkle water and the water will help in making a moist environment in the soil. Then we repeat like that to the level we want. What I think is a blessing to us. We use it for mulching, we use it smart for uh, direct, for, uh, like uh, manyewa, and we use uh, its real leaves for making compost manure. We are promoting conservation agriculture. 
And we are looking at the possibilities, and we have tested this, of no-till cultivation. It is abundant in the lake. When you harvest it, you can spread it on the farm with a thickness like one inch. Then it will suppress the weed, so there will be no weed coming from the soil. Kama mimi vile ni mkulema ni ni faida kwangu hata kama nikija na mboga huta, sitaona hasara sana. Juu nimetoa kwa shamba. Sasa nimetoa kwa shamba naleta hapa alafu napata wengine. Up next is a roundup of agricultural stories that have been making headlines in other parts of the world. The Department of Agriculture, Land Reform and Rural Development has reminded owners of cattle, sheep and goats to vaccinate their animals against Rift Valley fever. The department warned that the recent good rainfall in certain areas of the country will result in an increase in the numbers of mosquitoes that transmit this disease. RVF is a serious viral disease that is spread through mosquitoes. It causes abortions and death in young cattle, sheep and goats. People coming into contact with the blood and other body fluids of infected animals can also develop RVF. Farmers are therefore advised to vaccinate all cattle, sheep and goats against Rift Valley fever, especially in areas that have recently received rainfall. Live vaccine can only be used in non-pregnant animals as the live vaccine can cause abortions. The department said that the only inactivated vaccine must be used in pregnant animals. It is the responsibility of the animal owners to vaccinate their animals and prevent loss. Any suspicion of RVF must be reported immediately to the nearest state veterinarian. The government will be providing $200 million to assist sugarcane farmers in St. Thomas who have been negatively affected by the closure of the Golden Groove Sugar Factory. Minister of Industry, Commerce, Agriculture and Fisheries Honorable Ad Lee Shou made the announcement during a meeting with the farmers at the factory located in Dangfield recently. Minister Shou noted that the funds are to be used for the planting of new crops given that the demand for sugarcane has decreased. He added that the $200 million dollars is going to go into the ground because handing out money just to carry farmers throughout next week and next month will not solve the problem. Moreover, Honorable Shaw said that the majority of the 200 million dollars is going to be used to assist farmers to start planting other things. It will come in the form of inputs, fertilizers, seeds and animals. Minister Shaw said cane cutters who are not farmers will benefit from the support as well. Meanwhile, he is encouraging farmers who need land for planting to come forward. He advised them to present their plans to the Rural Agricultural Development Authority, RADA, which will share those plans with the ministry. The Golden Grove Sugar Factory was closed in 2019 by manufacturing company Seprod, which took over the business in 2009 with the hope of reviving the ailing sugar operation. On today's Sauti Amkulima, we talk to young people who engage in agricultural produce business in Kawangware market who are calling on other Kenyan youths to venture into the business. Ni kama ku take risk. It's not for the faint hearted. Unachukua sio kila siku unapata faida, lakini pia sio kila siku unapata hasara. Hasara ni mara moja moja. That's why unafaa wakati umepata kitu unajiwekea ya kesho. Ni rahisi pia ukiwa na attitude positive attitude. Eh, kuna watu wengi wanafanya kazi, wanakujia melon huku tunawakatakatia na at the end of the day mtu anapata 300 yake ama 500. Kuwezi linganisha na kushinda mtaani kwa bezi. Wasichagwe kazi, wafanya bidi, 
na kazi kazi ni kazi tu eh bana mshahara biashara ni poa at least una learning time una commit yani lazima uji commit wewe mwenyewe ujitole afu biashara ikiwa yako challenges wewe mwenyewe unazifesi ndio hata ukiandika kazi ya mtu unajua kazi ya mtu ni poa yani unaiangalia tu kama yako Now let's have a look at how different agricultural commodities are performing in different markets across the country. Now it's just about that time when we sample feedback from you that is from our social media pages at Farm Kenya and also on our SMS line on your screen. We'll begin with Ojaka from Kakapel who says, I'm interested in banana farming. Thank you so much Ojaka for tuning into KTN Farmers TV. You can watch our fresh and fruity show which airs every Monday and Tuesday at 9.30 p.m. for more on banana and also other types of fruits. We also have Stephen who says he would like to be a poultry farmer. What can I do? Thank you so much, Stephen. We really appreciate your feedback. You can catch a poultry farming show every Monday at 7 p.m. for more tips on how you can start and grow your poultry farming venture. Now we also have Tom Omino from Kisumu County and he says, Hi, I'm interested in starting a poultry farm. Could you show us some programs on poultry farming of local chicken? Kindly let me know the time, the view time, days and dates, please. Thank you so much, Tom. We really appreciate your feedback. We actually have a show uh, purely on poultry farming called Poultry Farming Show. And you can catch that every Monday at 7 p.m. For reruns or repeats, you can catch that on our YouTube page. That is at farmers underscore TV Kenya. Last but not least, we also have somebody else who says, thanks for the farm teachings. When are you airing a dairy farming. Thank you so much. Now you didn't leave your name or which county you reside in, but thank you as well. You can catch our Dairy Farms show that airs every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Now this is just a sample of the feedback that we have been receiving from you and we'll keep sampling this feedback every single day here on Agri News. If you'd like us to read your feedback, be sure to let us know on our social media pages and also on the SMS line on your screen. When you start with your feedback, start with the word Agri News, tell us your name and which county you reside in. That's all we had for you on Agri News. I'm Esther Gishuki, and as we wind up, let's have a look at the weather forecast. 